Hey guys, today we're going to go over um, unit 1.2 of the current IB syllabus, which is the ultra structure of cells. Okay, so before we dive in, I'm going to quickly go over the invention of the electron microscope. Electron microscopes have, a higher, have higher resolutions than mi light microscopes. This basically means that electron microscopes can produce images that are more zoomed in than light microscopes. A resolution, you guys will probably need to define this on, the te on a test, is the ability of a microscope to show two close objects separately. It depends on wavelengths of rays used to display an image. Basically, shorter wavelength equals higher resolution. Electrons have much shorter wavelength than light, therefore electron microscopes have much higher resolutions than light microscopes. Um, the invention of the electron microscope revealed the ultrastructure of cells because scientists could identify small organelles that they were not able to identify with just light microscopes. This is an example of how improvements in apparatus and technology can lead to developments in scientific research. Alright, so Prokaryotic cell structure. Prokaryotic cells are divided into two groups, archaea and eubacteria. That is a prokaryote. Um, prokaryotic cells have a simple cell structure without compartmentalization, which means that they're not divided into compartments. Prokaryotic cells have no nucleus. Instead, they have a nuclear region that contains free DNA. It's in the cytoplasm. It's, yeah, this region is called a nucleoid. Um, also have a cell wall composed of peptide again. The cell wall is a protective outer layer that maintains shape and prevents excessive water uptake. It also has a cell membrane stuck um, inside the cell wall, which controls what enters and leaves the cell. It also forms a barrier between the cell and the outside environment. All right. And that's the cytoplasm, contains enzymes for metabolism and also the ribosomes and the nucleoid and whatnot. Um, prokaryotic cells have 70S ribosomes. Ribosomes produces proteins. The 70S refers to the size of the ribosomes. When we go over eukaryotic cells, you guys are going to realize that eukaryotic cells have 80S ribosomes. I'll explain the difference later. The flagellum right there. Um, it rotates to propel the cell. It has to do with the locomotion of prokaryotes. Anyways, pili, they're hair-like projection from cell wall, and as you can see, they, protect, they protrude around the cell like that. All right, so that is an electron microscope of a prokaryotic cell. Um, the drawing underneath will help you interpret the electron micrograph. I advise you take a look at this. So the white regions right here are the nuclear regions that have free naked DNA. Um, and the cytoplasm looks a little dark due to the enzymes, but also the ribosomes. Um, the cell wall and cell membrane surrounds the whole um, complex. And yeah. That's all you guys need to know for that. All right, cell division and prokaryotes. So prokaryotes divide by binary fission, which is a form of asexual reproduction. Um, eukaryotes divide by mitosis and meiosis, but we'll go over that later in future videos. But anyways, for binary fission, what happens is the DNA inside prokaryotes um, divide or, or replicate into two identical copies that moves to opposite ends of the cell. The wall and plasma membrane pull inwards, dividing the cell. Now, what's formed is two genetically identical cells because the two DNAs have splitted and moved to opposite ends of cells and there they stay and now they're divided and now they only have one copy of each DNA. So two genetically identical cells basically means that they're clones. Binary fission produces clones. Eukaryotic cell structure. Eukaryotic cells are com compartmentalized, um, which means that they have compartments. They're more specialized and they have a more complex structure um, by the use of membranes. 
The advantages of compartmentalization is as follows. Um, I'm not going to read this because this is basically all you guys need to know. Um, I advise you to pause the video right here, write it down, or take it in, internalize it, because you guys will need to know all, at least three if not all, advantages of compartmentalization. It's crucial that you guys understand this. Okay, so that is a drawing of a eukaryotic cell. Um, I know it looks, I know it's misleading. It makes it seem like only plant cells have vesicles and well, whatever this is and lysosomes, but no, this division basically only pertains to the cell wall and the chloroplast, but I'll go over all this later. All right, so the nucleus right there. Um, eukaryotic cells have a nucleus that contains chromosomes, which are made of DNA and proteins. And if you guys remember, prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus. They don't have chromosomes. Instead, free DNA float around in the nucleoid region. Um, the nucleus has a double membrane, which means double membrane, and it has little pores right there. They're all labeled. All these structures are labeled. Um, they also have a cell membrane. They have cell membrane for eukaryotic cells have the same function of the cell membranes for prokaryotic cells. It forms a barrier between the cell and the environment. Same structure again, same function. Also cytoplasm, they contain organelles and enzymes, just like prokaryotic cells, um, prokaryotic cytoplasm. Now, as I said, the ADS refers to the size of these ribosomes. The ribosomes in eukaryotic cells also prote uh, produce proteins. However, they are a little bigger because in prokaryotic cells, um, they have 70S ribosomes. Um, eukaryotic cells have a rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is abbreviated RER, which have many ribosomes attached to the surface, and this RER is involved in the production of proteins. So you guys will see that um, cells that produce that need a lot of protein that produce a lot of enzymes will have a very big rough endoplasmic reticulum and a lot of ribosomes as well anyways the golgi apparatus looks like that it's basically yeah i'll point it out later i have micro electron micrograph um in a future slide that you guys could probably see all these structures um, they're involved in the production of proteins, the sorting of proteins, packaging of proteins. They also produce lysosomes, which are right there. Then what are lysosomes? They are organelles that contain digestive enzymes to break down ingested food particles and worn out cell parts. So basically, um, in cells that, re that do a lot of digestion, they would have a lot of lysosomes. Also, they have dark staining due to enzymes. So in electron micrographs, they will look darker than, let's say, mitochondria or any other organelle. All right, speaking of mitochondria, you guys probably learned in seventh grade that they're the powerhouse of the cell. Yes, they are. They're the site of aerobic cellular respiration. It has a double membrane, just like the nucleus. Chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis. You guys probably know this already. It has a triple membrane, um, unlike the mitochondria and, nuclear and the nucleus, a triple membrane, so three membranes. And they only exist in plant cells because only plant cells go through photosynthesis. Vacuoles and vesicles. So they're extremely large in plant cells. They're like the central vacuole of plant cells take up almost the full space. They're small in animal cells like that, but they exist in large numbers. Vacuoles and vesicles storage water, waste, and nutrients. They also transport um, materials 
from each part of the cell. Anyways, um, the central vacuole of a plant cell maintains turgor pressure by pushing against the cell wall, keeping the plant upright. That's why when you don't water the plant, it starts drooping because it loses turgor pressure because the central vacuole is not full and cannot push against the cell wall. Anyways, um, plant cells have a cell wall. They're made of cellulose. Only in plant cells protect cells and give it and gives it a shape. Um, the cilia and flagella, they're not in this diagram, exist only in animal cells. They're both used for locomotion, which is the movement. All right, that is the micrograph of a eukaryotic cell, and the structures are all labeled. As you see, the mitochondrion labeled is not ovular but more circular yeah so i know in a lot of drawings mitochondrions look like that but in electron micros micrographs you guys will see a lot of mitochondria that are circular so don't be misleaded um the nucleus right there it's the big structure free ribosomes are black dots floating around in the cytoplasm. Lysosome, as you see, is much darker than mitochondrion due to the enzymes. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is typically next to the nucleus. It's like this extensive structure that looks like, I don't know, seaweed. And Golgi apparatus is smaller than the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It looks like that. Um, what I advise you guys to do is look up a lot of electron micrograph um, micrographs online and try to identify where each um, organelle is or what each organelle is because you guys will probably need to label organelles um, on your test or something. So we're going to go over two more cells, the exocrine gland cells and I believe a leaf cell, but anyways, starting off with exocrine gland cells. Um, they secrete digestive enzymes into the intestine. Since enzymes are proteins, um, these cells have organelles needed to synthesize, transport, and release large quantities of proteins. Now pause the video here and try to remember which organelles are involved in the synthesis, the transport, and the release of large quantities of proteins. Okay. Are the answers? Whoopsies. Okay, so the nucleus is there because all cells have a nucleus. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, they produce enzymes or proteins. Golgi apparatus, they synthesize proteins. Vesicles, they transport proteins. Cell plasma membrane, well, they're in every cell. And the mitochondria, exists in these type of cells in large amounts because um, protein synthesis requires a lot of energy and therefore the cell requires a complex metabolism process. Anyways, yeah, that basically summarized what I said. Um, exocrine gland cells have lots of RER, meaning lots of proteins are produced for secretion. And they also have lots of mitochondria because the synthesis of proteins require energy and um, need mitochondria to carry out metabolism. Lots of vesicles exist near the inside border because they need to transport these enzymes um, from this cell to the outside environment. So basically, um, what I think you guys will have to do on a test is maybe look, they're going to give you this micrograph and be like, okay, um, label these organelles. And then you'll label RER, mitochondria, vesicles, and then there'll be what type of cell is this and why? Then you'll say exocrine gland cells because they have a lot of mitochondria and a lot of RER and vesicles and you guys will list the reasons and you guys will get an A plus on the test. Anyways, the next cell is palisade mesophyll cells. Okay, that's hard to say. They they carry out most photosynthesis of a plant. Therefore, they have 
organelles required for photosynthesis. If you guys want, pause the video here and try to think of the organelles that you guys would expect to see in the micrograph. They are as follows. Okay. Um, that is a micrograph of palisade mesophyll cells. Try to see if you guys could identify the organelles. I mean, I would say these are little vesicles. Those are, that's the nucleus. Um, chloroplasts. Oh, did I say nucleus? Yeah, nucleus, and that's the central vacuole. And then it has a cell wall because it's a plant cell, probably a cell membrane inside it. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, yeah. So those are chloroplasts for photosynthesis, and they have black stains, the starch grains, um, cell wall, and central vacuole. As I said. All right. Thanks for watching this video. Um, make sure you guys get more practice on labeling and identifying cells using electron micrographs. Um, please like and subscribe if you like this video and want more content on IB biology or IB physics or math or whatnot. Thank you.